Hello and welcome to my presentation with the title Insect Waste Makes Textile Processing More Sustainable within the session Innovative Fibers and Technical Textiles Derived from Biomass. My name is Thomas Hahn and I am research scientist in the group Bioprocess Development at the Fraunhofer IGB. So the agenda is as follows. First, I want to talk uh, about the chitin and chitosan background and give some background information concerning the structure, the sources and applications. The second topic uh, of my talk is um, our investigations concerning the chitosan production from residues of the insect protein manufacture. The name of the session or according to the name of the session, I want to give you an example how chitosan can be um, applied in the textile processing such as a sizing agent or as reactive template for hydrophobation. Last but not least, I want to provide you a summary and an outlook. So chitin is the second most abundant carbohydrate polymer on Earth after cellulose, but the structure is similar to cellulose with the exception of the acid amino group you could see here in the structure on the right uh, red mark, resulting in different chemical and physical properties, but both together is their insolubility in water. So to use chitin, we need to produce the main derivative, uh, which is named chitosan, uh, due to the activity of enzymes or due to the activity of concentrated alkaline uh, conditions like sodium hydroxide, which makes it soluble in diluted acids. And the applications of the chitosan are versatile, just as uh, wastewater treatment, uh, to use it as a flocculation agent or in medicine, uh, it has a use as a drug carrier. But um, to be honest, the, the potential is not really exploited. Uh, at the moment, it does not exceed the laboratory stage. So there are much more investigations needed. So which chitin source is the best? On one hand, we got the fungi, which embed chitin and also chitosan in a native form in its cell wall, embedded with or cross-linked with beta-glucane complexes. On the other hand, we got the arthropods with insects or with crustaceans, where the chitin is mainly embedded in, um, in a matrix of proteins, minerals, and catechins. Today, I want to focus on the extraction of chitin from insects. So the benefits of these insect chitin are that large-scale insect breeding facilities for the protein production are launching worldwide. Um, the annual production in Europe in the year 2017 was around 27 kilotons. And it, it is expected to reach more than 9 million tons in 2030 alone in Europe. Another benefit is that it, the, the insect protein production is not subjected to season, seasonality as is the case for the crustaceans. And the chitin structure is comparable to that of, of crustaceans. Another advantage is that there are low breeding costs. And uh, the question, of course, arises, how is breeding working? And this, I, I want to give you an impression about the insect protein production and about the life cycle of the Hermetia illusens, uh, which is also named Black Soldier Fry, which is commonly used for this protein production. So first, we got the eggs, uh, which incubate for about six to eight days. After this incubation time, the larvae hatch would get fed by organic residues. And these larvae were also processed to use to, to produce the, the protein, um, but they also transformed to pre pupae. And within this transformation to the pre pupae, they shed their skins to result in larval exoskeletons as one side stream. The pre pupae developed to pupae after five to eight days, which did not do not uptake any other feed. And in the final step, they develop to or transform to black soldier flies. And within this transformation from the pupae to the black soldier flies to the adults, uh, some pupal exuvia result. So the question arises now, which stage is then suitable for the chitin extractions? And therefore, we have to develop new methods for the chitin analytics in insects because also of the complex structure um, of the chitin is Im embedded in the insects. So in insects, it is tightly cross-linked to catechols and proteins. So this is uh, to be considered within the development of the analytics. So first we orientated ourselves towards the foodstuff analytics. 
and we uh, develop the method or we would take uh, the method ADF or the, this is the non-digestible fiber, which but unfortunately sums up the chitin-linked compounds like the proteins and the catecholamines. So we also determined the ADL. The ADL accounts for the different catecholes and the catecholamines present in the chitin matrix due to the process of sclerotization. So if we can subtract the ADL from the ADF, we, give a, we get a much more accurate chitin measurement. Another measurement we designed and developed is the acetyl group uh, determination uh, after total hydrolysis. So we can correlate the acetyl concentration in the, in the liquid after total hydrolysis with the chitin content in the insect material. And what we saw and what we determined is that, for example, larval exoskeletons, uh, exoskeletons contain a chitin con uh, chitin amount of more than 30%, which is also comparable to the pupal exuvia chitin content, which also accounts to 25% chitin of the dry mass. That means these both samples, these both side streams um, are valuable for the chitin and chitosan production. So we determined the suitable sources for the chitin isolation, um, but we need to obtain the chitin in a more pure form. So we developed a four process, a uh, four-step process which encompasses on one hand the homogenization which includes the cleaning, drying and grinding. We perform demineralization with organic acids resulting in a more than 90% decreased ash content with regard to the raw pupil exuvia. We perform the treatment with the, uh, at alkaline conditions with the demineralized uh, pupil exuvia uh, with enzymes to, leading to an effective deproteinization of the pupillex uvia. And last but not least, we also performed a bleaching, which serves the removal of catecholes and the brightening of the, the, the chitin. And at the same time, as you can see here uh, in, the, in the red uh, square, uh, at the same time increases chitin purity again uh, around 10%. So what is the most important to know now, what is the main expression is that the chitin quality in the end is comparable to that of the Kurschen based one. So as I already told you, chitin needs to be converted to chitosan since it is not soluble in the majority of the solvents. So to do so, the chitin should be deacetylated, which can be done at alkaline conditions uh, by the two process strategies. So one process uh, uses or applies high temperatures, which is called heterogeneous deacetylation, and the other one uh, applies homogeneous uh, conditions that means low temperatures uh, for the acetylations. And the difference can be seen here in the right corner, uh, which results in different patterns of the residual acetyl groups, which are homogeneously, as the name says, distributed, applying low temperatures, and heterogeneously ordered utilizing high temperatures. This temple, uh, table comprises different various values characterizing the reaction and product, such as yield, deacetylation degree, and so on. But so, for example, which is marked in, in the red, uh, in the red square, for example, the viscosity values cover a broad range, resulting also from different solid-liquid ratios or incubation time. And that means that chitosan properties can also be fine-tuned by the reaction conditions. As I told you before, according to the name of the sessions, I want to also to give you some examples concerning the application of the chitosan in the textile processing. So as you know, that weaving exhibits high mechanical loads to the yarn. That means that the yarn during weaving needs to be protected. And chitosan is one of the, these promising sizing agents which uh, forms such a protective film to protect the yarn. So what are the requirements for the chitosan is on one hand good film formation, then the second topic is moderate viscosity, and the residual or the, the last topic or the last bullet point, it should exhibit low roughening and abrasion uh, of the textile and the fabric um, in the weaving simulations. So after drying of an insect chitosan solution, we obtained a homogeneous and transfer, transparent film. That means that one requirement is fulfilled within that. The next thing is the, or the next topic issue is the, the viscosity. Uh, if there is a, 
A too high viscosity of the sizing liquid it is not practicable. A too low viscosity of the sizing liquid means there is no adhesion to the yarn and no film formation. So what we can see here in this is that the insect catasan has a slightly lower um, viscosity as solution compared to high molecular weight catasan or low molecular weight catasan from crab shots. But as I told you two slides before, the chitosan properties can be adapted by the reaction conditions and we see here that the viscosity is in a suitable range for applications. Most important are the application specific investigations. Uh, we should evaluate the roughness at different loadings of the chitosan um, or at different coating degrees after weaving and a lower roughness after weaving indicates the effectiveness of the chitosan as a sizing agent. To give you an example, uh, if this is a, if yarns get weaved with a worse sizing agent, um, increased roughness of the yarns of the product uh, results, if we got a good sizing or apply a good sizing agent, there is a decreased roughness. And what we can see is that insect chitosan exhibit values which are comparable to the commercial crab shell chitosan, that means the roughness decreases with increasing coating degree and with increasing concentration of chitosan, which is better than a commonly used commercial receipt. Another application in uh, can be uh, another application of the chitosan is in textile finishing, so that chitosan can act as a template or matrix material because it has, adheres to the different fiber materials and. It enables the targeted functionalization because of the amine groups, primary amine groups, or epoxides or activated carboxy groups. Uh, sorry, um, enables the targeted functionalization because of the exposed hydroxy group and the primary amine groups. And these functionalization can be done via epoxides, uh, activated carboxy groups, and so on. So that means we got versatile uh, opportunities to derivatize the, the chitosan on a chemical or enzymatic way. And I want to give you one example with an enzymatic process used for the hydrophobization of textiles. This is a, a scheme only, a scheme for an enzymatic process to, um, to covalently link the chitosan to the hydrophobic molecule. First, the enzyme activates the hydrophobic molecule, which can be mixed with chitosan um, and uh, reacted with chitosan via the three primary amine groups and the chitosan and the activated hydrophobic molecule couple covalently to get a hydrophobic chitosan and this reaction works also if the chitosan is already on the textile and that leads me to the to the process strategy so um, the the process strategy we perform is then not to preliminary um, hydrophobize the chitosan but first to coat the textile with the chitosan and then to apply the hydrophobic reagent. So I cannot give you a hint concerning the enzyme or the molecules itself, but I can show you the results. And we determined the hydrophobicity of the coated textiles uh, with wetting time and contact angle. And the contact angle evaluates the wetting of a surface by a liquid, commonly water, by measuring the drop form. And the higher the contact angle is, and the higher is the hydrophobicity. So the wetting time is determined by the time a water drop uh, permeates the surface. And what we saw after enzymatic treatment uh, of fabrics with cotton or polyester is that with chitosan we got a wetting time exceeding 12, two hours and contact angles exceeding 135 degrees. And they are also persistent for two wash steps, meaning that the, the wetting time is decreased to 60 minutes, but at least 60 minutes, um, but the contact angle is more than 125 degrees yet. So this uh, leads me to my summary that insect has only one phrase to, to summarize it's uh, insect catasan, its application and modification provides benefits in the textile process. Our first prospective works are that to establish a complete insect biorefinery, that meaning uh, that means a holistic utilization from the protein over lipids to the chitosan of the raw material and also the side and waste streams. We would also like to focus on chitosan production from fungal waste to focus on vegan chitosan for especially from uh, waste streams from citric acid, mushroom or ethanol production. And what we also want to do in 
uh, prospective works is to scale up and optimize the hydrophobication process and to use Kytosan for the, the purification of the dying wastewater, which is another example for using Kytosan in the textile process. And with that, I want to conclude my presentation. There is a, a contact and literature. Please feel free to, to contact us and have a look at our literature. And I would like to thank uh, BMBF for funding, REB and PTJ, uh, uh, PTJ for project implementation within the project Kytotex and Hydrofishy. And of course, thanks to all my project partners and all my students. And thank you for your attention. I think there are some questions. Thank you.